Peter Buswell for DrVOIP.com with a quick overview of how to build an automated attendant inside the Enterprise Contact Center. Also, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to show you why you might want to do that and to introduce you to my favorite new icon, the Change Call Profile icon. But before we do that, let's take a quick review of how a call flows from the Shortel headquarters uh, PBX system to the Enterprise Contact center, server, and application. Generally, the glue between the Shortel headquarters PBX and the Enterprise Contact Center is something called the route points. Route points you will find through the Shoreware Director Portal. It's an administrative tool which enables you, in this example, to take a PSTN DNS or DID number create a route point and have that route point map to an IRN, an internal route number, in the Enterprise Contact Center application. So invariably there will be one route point for each IRN and they will have matching extension numbers. When you're planning out your short tell extension, uh, system extensions, you need to allow for sufficient route points uh, you will also use route points to uh, create IVR channels into the Enterprise Contact Center application. An IVR channel is used whenever we're playing music to the caller or whenever the caller is interacting with a script in the Enterprise Contact Center application. That script might collect touch tone digits, for example. We might use uh, an IVR port to capture a request to enter your account number uh, and then do a SQL data dip to look that uh, account information up. That entire process requires the use of an IVR port. Uh, while we're in the audio plan in our service listening to music, we are using an IVR port. So a call will come in from the PSTN. It will go to a route point. The route point in turn has a a uh, direct relationship with an IRN in the Enterprise Contact Center application. Yeah, if you wanted, for example, to report the number of people that dialed 1-800-HELP-ME and how many people dialed 100-TEACH-ME, 1-800-TEACH-ME, uh, you would have to set those DNS numbers to point to a different route point in the Shortel PBX, even though they may, in fact, uh, point to the same service in the contact center. You will bring them in through IRNs. The important takeaway is this. You've got a route point. You've got a matching IRN. End of story. Call comes in, goes to the route point. The route point connects to the IRN, which is really your entree into the enterprise contact center application. This will be typically a TAPI, TAPI wave connection. IRNs connect with services or scripts. The destination of an IRN can be a script or it can be a service. A service will define an audio plan, inner flow, overflow, and they will ultimately have a destination that points to a group of agents and overflow perhaps to another group of agents. But at the end of the day, that's the connectivity between the PBX and the contact center application. So let's create a simple automated attendant and I will show you how the change call profile icon works. We're inside the Shoreware graphical control scripting tool. I'm going to say new script. Let's go ahead and name the new script here, uh, main greeting and then bring up our palette of icons. If you have a contact center, your selection of icons will be something smaller, a shorter list than this. This is the Enterprise Contact Center. And it's very easy to create scripts, um, well known to those who know it well. 
you're going to have to play with it a bit, especially if you're using any of the advanced scripting tools like the SQL, uh, SQL Connect, Logic Switches, things of that ilk. But we're going to create a very simple automated attendant. We're going to do that by grabbing the menu icon, dragging it out here to our workspace. We're going to take the little green arrow at the top. Uh, this is where our call connects with this action and it points to the menu. The menu enables us to highlight it and then go out here and select the voice prompt that uh, we want to play when the action is initialized. So perhaps I have a pre-recorded greeting that says thanks for calling. Uh, please dial 1 uh, for the accounting department. Well, much like you do in the PBX, the short tail PBX, you're going to want to transfer that call. So let's grab the transfer icon, drag it out on the screen, and then connect the digit 1 with transfer. When I highlight transfer, I get a predefined destination. Let's say hey, the accounting department is an extension 7000 and so forth. Uh, let's say uh, the digit 2 needs to transfer off to the sales department and the sales department is at 7020. That's all very intuitive, very easy. Call comes in, it hears a menu. Down here we can say uh, we'll give them two opportunities to enter the correct digits. We'll time out after five, in which case we'll follow the E for error. Uh, we'll clear DTMF on start. We'll stop the prompt to stop the playing of the greeting when uh, they press a digit. But what happens if I want to send the call to a previously created entity uh, called a service? If you recall, services are where we set up uh, the handling of a call as to the destination, overflow, interflow, uh, what do we do if there are no agents? Uh, do we have callback, abandoned calls? The announcement plan, the announcement plan uh, is the various messages people hear in queue. The announcement plan can also include a script uh, to collect callback information. But this is a service. How are we going to have a menu item that says, uh, dial 9 to speak to someone in tech support. Well, that's a little bit of a challenge, but thankfully we have this wonderful icon here called the Change Call Profile. And if I drag this puppy out onto the screen and I say dial 9 to speak to tech support, I highlight the Change Profile icon and it brings up an opportunity for me to insert the call profile. Now, call profiles are buckets uh, in which we uh, capture certain system level information. For example, caller ID would be a system level uh, call profile. And account number may have been a user defined call profile. You can create your own call profiles. But really here I'm not interested in a call profile. I am however interested in sending this call to a service. And on the list here you will find service required. And it, it will at that point enable me to go select TAC1, which is the service I set up for my tech support organization. So as you can see this is a very simple tool for creating an automated attendant and this change call profile icon is extremely powerful and there is much that you can do uh, with this including use it in the auto attendant to transfer a call to a service. I hope you have found this informative and I thank you for viewing.